Okay, hi, so welcome to this, the first video on the circulatory system where we're just gonna be talking about the heart, right? We're gonna be talking about the role of the heart and the structure of the heart, okay? So let's crack straight on. So here we have a relatively realistic diagram of the heart, right? Of course, it's not labeled yet, but it will be in a second. Now, the first thing I want to make clear is that what you can see on your left-hand side is actually the right side of the heart. Okay, so I'm just going to write here, right and over here, left. Okay, you'll normally see diagrams drawn like this. There's a very, very good reason because this is what it would look like if you were looking at the person, right? Because obviously the person is going to be facing the other way to you. So your right hand side is actually their left and vice versa. Okay, so the left hand side is uh, on the diagram, sorry, is the right hand side of the heart. Okay, if you are unsure, one way to recognize is look at which one has the thicker wall. Okay, you see this part here is thicker than this part here. Well, the left side of the heart always has the thicker wall. Okay, and I'll tell you why in a second. And so that is definitely the left. This one with the bigger gap in the middle. But All right, so let's get on to naming it. Now, don't worry yourself too much about these tubes for now. Okay, the, the things that you really need to watch out for are the cavities. Okay, there's one, two, and then this large one, and then this large one. Okay, so you have two smaller um compartments and two larger compartments okay now the smaller compartments are called the atria okay the atria okay and the singular is atrium okay now the larger compartments i'm just going to raise that up a little bit the larger compartments are called the ventricles okay obviously singular is the ventricle so and they're named very easily by looking at which one on which side of the heart they are so this one here is called the right atrium okay and this one here is called the left atrium this one here is called the right ventricle and this one here is called the left ventricle okie doke now the roles of these are quite simple so blood is going to come into the heart into the atria right or the right atrium and the left atrium right and then the ventricle's job is to pump the blood <clears throat> elsewhere okay and so the atria basically receive the blood and the ventricles pump the blood and that's why it's split up into separate compartments now each side actually has a different job okay so what's going to happen in one complete cycle your blood basically is pumped by the heart twice, okay? And there's a name for that, and that is a double circulatory system, okay? So I'm just gonna scroll up here and write that. We have a double circulatory system, okay? Not all animals do. Fish, for example, have a single circulatory system, right? Other animals have a single circulatory system where blood will only go through the heart once, and then it'll come back and then it will go through the heart again and that's and that's a separate cycle right whereas in one cycle blood will enter our heart and be pumped by our heart twice now how that happens is blood initially enters the right atrium okay so blood comes in i'm actually going to draw it in blue okay that's why i wrote the right in blue because blood here does not have oxygen okay it comes in and it's blue because it doesn't have oxygen it fills up the right atrium okay the right atrium contracts to push the blood into the right ventricle right and there we go okay and the right ventricle basically pumps the blood to the lungs because i told you the blood at the moment has no oxygen it pumps the blood to the lungs okay and it pumps it by contracting and then the blood is shot out here and through there you can see right you do not need to know the shape of these tubes by the way i've just got it because this is um a realistic diagram Okay, but so it's pumped out of these tubes. I'm gonna name these tubes uh, in a second, but it's pumped to the lungs. Okay, it gets oxygen from the lungs, of course, and then arrives back at the heart. Okay, and it comes in here. Okay, it arrives back at the heart, and you see now it's red because it has oxygen, and that's the color of oxygenated blood. And then from there, it's pumped from the left atrium into the left ventricle in here. Okay. And then from there, it's pumped to the rest of the body and it's out 
here, okay, to the rest of the body. And so that's why it's called a double circulatory system. You've had it pumped by the heart to the lungs, comes back, pumped by the heart again to the rest of the body, and then it will come back. And where it comes back, because it's pumped to the rest of the body, the body uses the oxygen, and then it comes back to the right atrium, and the whole cycle continues again, right? So I'm going to get rid of those for a second. Whoops, not that one. There we go. Okay, and now I'm quickly going to label these tubes. Now, when I keep saying tubes. These are actually blood vessels, right? You know what arteries, veins, and capillaries are, right? We're going to go through them actually in the next video, okay, in, in more detail. But they're vessels which carry blood, okay? Now, this one here, this is where the blood comes in. This is called the vena cava, right? It is a vein, okay? It's a very, very large vein called the vena cava, right? That brings blood to the right atrium. The right ventricles then pump the blood out, remember, to the lungs, and that is via this tube, and that is called the pulmonary artery. Okay, the way to remember that is the word pulmonary means to do with the lungs. Okay, so the artery <clears throat> and the artery is taking blood to something, so the pulmonary artery is taking blood to the lungs. Okay, so when blood arrives back from the lungs, have a guess what it's called. Well, the blood that's brought back is brought back in the vein, okay? And it's to do with the lungs, so it's the pulmonary vein, okay? And that's this one here, right? And then lastly, we have um, the blood vessel, which is an artery, which takes blood to the rest of the body, right? And that is this one here, right, with all those branches coming off it. That is called the aorta. Okay, so that's a very, very large artery. This one is a very, very large vein. Okay, the pulmonary artery takes blood to the lungs. The pulmonary vein brings blood back from the lungs. And so what I'm going to do quickly is I'm going to run through the cycle, okay, the complete cycle. Okay, so, and you have to be very careful about whether the blood is oxygenated or deoxygenated when you're describing this. So deoxygenated blood arrives at the or arrives to the right atrium via the vena cava. Okay, this is the start of the next cycle, basically, right? The end of the cycle is this, and then the next cycle is beginning. Okay, what happens then? The right atrium contracts, pushing the blood into the right ventricle. Okay. What happens next? Well, the right ventricle then pumps the blood. Okay, so the right ventricle contracts, pumping blood, or pumping, I'm going to say deoxygenated blood, to the lungs via the pulmonary artery. Okay, then blood, I'll put a space actually. Blood then arrives at the left atrium via the pulmonary vein. Yep, the pulmonary vein. That's what brings the blood back from the lungs. Yep, the left atrium contracts, pushing blood into the left ventricle. Whoop, there we go. Okay. The left ventricle contracts, pumping blood to the rest of the body via the aorta. Okay, and the aorta is that giant artery that we spoke about, right? Now that is the whole um, process, okay? There's one more thing that um, I want to mention, and that is something called the coronary arteries, right? Now, if I go up here, you won't be able to see them on here. But basically, the coronary arteries are arteries which bring blood to the heart muscle, right? The heart is a muscle that needs to pump, right? It's doing work, and so it needs energy. And the way it gets energy is, of course, uh, by respiration, right? Which requires oxygen. That's the whole purpose of the blood, right? So some of um, the blood is actually needed to supply the heart muscle itself, right? So this part, the lining of, of, of the heart here, right? This is what's gonna contract, yep. 
Now that needs energy, and what is going to supply those are called the coronary arteries, right? So I'm gonna write that down here. Oh, there we go. Okay, the coronary arteries supply the heart muscle with blood so that it can obtain oxygen for respiration. Yep, I'll say because it needs energy to continue pumping blood. Okay, all right. That about does it for the structure of the heart, right? One last thing uh, to mention is that the heart, as you should know, is able to beat by itself, right? In the heart itself, okay, or on the heart, on the heart muscle, there is a group of cells which actually, um, which actually stimulate the heart to beat, okay? They produce an electrical impulse and that causes the heart to beat, okay? And it will continue to beat at around about the same rhythm, Okay, and so that um, those electrical impulses travel through the heart and they cause the contractions, right? The whole that whole cycle that we spoke about occurs as a result of those contractions. Okay, and so that's uh, the job of those cells. Sometimes though, those cells are damaged, right? You don't need to know what those cells are called, by the way. If you do A level, you will find out. Um, let's say that those cells are here, which is a roundabout, right? Sometimes those cells are damaged and so your heart can't beat properly. It can't regulate its own beating. That's where you require an artificial pacemaker, okay? And an artificial pacemaker is something, uh, or it's a device, which sends impulses to the heart, right? So it's, uh, it's applied somewhere on your skin or under your skin and it has wires going to the heart. It then sends electrical impulses to the heart and causes the heart to beat as if um, the cells were not damaged, right? And so... That's another part of the heart which is really important because you may be wondering, well, how does the heart beat? It's because it has these cells which um, produce electrical impulses and that causes muscle contraction, okay? So I think that was enough uh, in terms of information. There's quite a lot of information there, right? But just remember that, <clears throat> excuse me, just remember the series of events. The blood has to come into the heart, be pumped to the lungs, come back from the lungs, then be pumped around the body, right? Then the cycle repeats itself and then it makes it a whole lot easier for you. So we're going to stop there. I hope you've enjoyed that. If you do have any questions, please do uh, post a comment in the box below or send me a direct email using the link. But as usual, please like and subscribe because it really helps me out. And of course, you will be notified whenever new videos become available. But thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.